Okay, we're back to talk about how brains can heal themselves. How can brains get themselves into a better mode? On my YouTube channels, I have two YouTube channels about brain reboot. I always use the outro, control your brain or it will control you. And then when I talk about brain training, some people have said, we're going to control our brain with our brain. This is so confusing. And my retort in a loving way is that no, we're not going to use our brains to control our brains. We are going to use our bodies and our minds and then we're gonna use some high tech too so that we can control our brains to stay there. So the way that brains heal and change and can improve is through neuroplasticity. And there's a few scientific principles, none of them will wound your brain hopefully, but that I would like you to know because when you understand how they work, science shows, integrated theory it's called, shows when you know how something works, then you have a strategy to do it, you are more engaged in it, it becomes more salient and meaningful, you can use the techniques and strategies and feel great about them because you understand what they are doing in your brain. And that's what I wanna do here briefly. So neuroplasticity can be your best friend or your worst enemy, depending upon what you are doing. It becomes your best friend when you are doing all the right stuff. So neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to change its performance pattern. We know this and it will change based upon how you are training it. So it's your best friend if you're eating healthy and you're exercising, you're taking your brain breaks and your work, you're balancing your work, your relationships and your hobbies. That is using neuroplasticity to create what is called a positive feedback loop, which means that you're creating the best electrical energy pattern in your brain. You're bringing these down and the perfect processing speed in the middle up. And then you're using that pattern in your world so that you're getting positive behaviors and positive outcomes and you're being rewarded for that and then it feeds back and it locks that brain pattern in even tighter. It is called Hebb's Law. Neurons that fire together wire together. It creates the positive neural pathways for positive change. But if you are stuck in a negative feedback loop, what happens is you're using the brain train the brain pattern out here in the extremes too much fastness too much slowness what that gets you is stressed anxious overwhelmed overdrive burnt out feeling exhausted you use these patterns more and more and more because we know from the science and from life stress begets more stress stress begets burnout and exhaustion so if you're using these patterns you've set your brain up with a negative feedback loop of being stressed and overwhelmed and exhausted, which gets you negative behaviors. It gets you negative outcomes of feeling more stressed and getting behind in work and not enjoying time with your family and your partner and having to feel like you work all the time. Negative outcomes that then feed back to your brain and lock it in so you're using this pattern. We are going to do a pattern interrupt if you're in this mode and we're gonna bring it down. If you're in this mode, we're gonna to continue to pop it up so that we can lock in this positive feedback loop forever. That's the goal. We're gonna lock it in forever using Hebb's Law. And if you happen to be using the pattern out here, we're going to unlock it and unwire it using something called anti-Hebbian learning theory. We're gonna stop using that neural pathway so that it weeds over and it goes away. That's anti-Hebbian law, while we are locking in and using the positive feedback loop. So we are going to take neuroplasticity and we're gonna make it your best friend using brain training. Okay, I hope you understand that. Follow me through to the next activity. I'll see you there.